Hello everybody, this is Mr. Exco, and today I'm going to show you how to create your own internet radio station. Now this is part one of two videos I'm going to make, and pretty much there are two ways to accomplish this. Uh, there is an easier way, which I'm going to show you in this video, or and a more complicated way, which I will show you in part two. Now, um, basically an internet radio station consists of three parts. You have the source client, which is where the music is coming from, the server, which pretty much it relays the, the stuff that the source client sends to it and feeds it to, a bun to all of the uh, clients, which is the third part. And um, so what it does is it loads like, think of like, uh, it records like 30 seconds pretty much and feeds it to the server and then the user will download that 30 seconds and then when it's done, it's already downloaded the 30 seconds, uh, the next part. So think of it this way. It's like, um, w it's, it's not like live, like radio, but it is live in the sense because it's just, it's going to be lagged behind where the, um, where the Winamp is broadcasting, okay? Because it's kind of hard to explain. Think It's like, what it does is it downloads a period of time, let's say 10 seconds, onto the computer at first. That's when it's buffering, the initial buffering. And uh, then, after that, while it's playing those 10 seconds, downloads the next 10 seconds. So when it's done playing the first 10 seconds that it buffered, it already has the next 10 downloaded. And it feeds it live, so pretty much it gives it pieces of of the broadcast like that and you know so pretty much when you do it live it's it's going to be delayed by a good 30 40 seconds to the other computer depending on a couple factors considering how fast their internet is the the uh ping or the lag um so anyway let's get on with the video so this is pretty basic and i'll show you everything um so here we go first thing you need to get uh, we're going to open up a couple tabs, and so open up uh, Firefox, your preferred browser, and open up Google and just search Winamp, oh. and uh, click the first link, then open up a new tab, go to Google, and this tab we're going to uh, Google Shoutcast, there we go, and click this first link. Then, in the uh, third tab, we are going to open up Listen to My Radio. Spelled just like a listen to my radio.com. And uh, so, here we go. First thing on the Winamp uh, thing, you're going to click Free Download right here. Pretty simple and click the free download. If you really want an MP3 bundle too, you can download that. Just click that and the download will start. Click save file. Very cool. And I'll minimize that. Go to Shoutcast. We're gonna click uh, Broadcast Now. And we're gonna scroll down on the page and there'll be this thing called the Shoutcast DSP plugin for Winamp. Okay, and uh, so we're going to click download, and we're also going to save that file. If you don't have Firefox and it looks a little bit different, like the downloading thing to you, um, because it's in Internet Explorer, don't fear, it's pretty much the same thing. Just download it and tell it to save it on your hard drive somewhere so you're able to access it. Okay, so now a neat thing about Firefox is it has them all listed here, which I'm just going to click on them. But uh, if you do decide to do it a different way, note the location where you download it and go and start them up there. So first thing we're going to start is this winamp.exec uh, file. We're going to install that. That Pretty much that window popped up and said, would you like this uh, program to be able to make changes to your computer? Obviously, it's an install program, so it's going to do so. So we're going to click Next. Agree to this. Already read it. I agree. Oh, back. Okay. Choose a program files location. 
that is pretty good. If you don't know what this is, don't worry about it. Okay, it's good. It, it's just if you're really picky where you save your hard or your software, then you might want to change it using the browse tool or just typing it in here if you're a real computer techie guy. Next, so then uh, you might want to scroll down. So there's different things like the Winamp Detector plugin. Uh, let's see what that does. No, well, so pretty much you can take parts out. Pretty much I'm just going to install everything uh, that's in it. So I'm on custom. So next, create start menu entry. Yeah, you want all those. Well, unless you're picky. Next, I'm not going to install the Winamp toolbar, AOL search, or any of these. Um, to get installed also but if you really want them you can install them uh, do not install good guide install and it should install fairly quickly and uh, take a second also remember the location where you are installing Winamp okay um, because that is where we're going to install the Shoutcast DSP plugin. Okay, let's unclick that because we don't want it to start right now. Click finish. Okay, so then bring up your downloads thing again and find the Shoutcast DSP 223 windows.exec. Let's just start that up. And we're going to click next. I agree. I've already read that. And pretty much you'll notice that it already has the default destination folder for Winamp. So if you didn't change it earlier, this is fine. If you did change it earlier, you're going to want to change this so it points to the Winamp folder that you installed Winamp to. Like next. And, uh, um, no, I don't need documentation. I'm going to show you how to use it. It says the current DSP. Let's run Winamp afterwards. So finish. Okay, so then Winamp started up because it installed fairly quickly. I'm going to exit that download thing. And uh, this, you're able to just to choose your skin. It just changes how it looks. I'm going to use this bento skin. Um, I don't want it to associate with any files on my computer. Uh, what would that be? Yeah, let's associate with Winamp files. Uh, so because I have... I use or I use normally like iTunes for music and stuff, so I don't want it to play uh, the files in Winamp instead of iTunes. So let this click next. Featured services. I'm gonna exit or uncheck all of these unless you really want to listen to them because um, pretty much we're gonna use Winamp not as like a media player, which you can use it for, but to broadcast our radio station from. So we click next. And uh, I'm just going to click, click finish. I don't want to give them my information. You want the following program, blah, blah, blah. Yes. It does this for that first time, and then that's it. Okay, here we go. Let's make Winamp the same size as uh, the broadcasting window, 720p. Over here, so you notice it started up the Nullsoft Shoutcast source. Oh, you can see my desktop. Okay. But, um, so pretty much... Let's say this didn't start up immediately, so it, it was just the Winamp box. Now how we do that is we go to Options, Preferences, and we're going to scroll down to where it says DSP sla or forward slash effect. We're going to click that and then start up the effect right there by double clicking it or clicking Configure Active Plugin. Then we can just exit this and the DSP is still there. You notice it just was hiding behind Winamp. Okay. So that's all we have to do for right now. We'll come back to Winamp in this later. Leave it running. Open up the Firefox, exit those extra two tabs that we had, and then we're going to sign up for a free Listen to My Radio account. So uh, it's all free. We're going to use radio streaming. Click Sign Up Now. Ooh, stuff was already there. Okay, full name. I'm going to write uh, Jack. This is my first name. Jack Woods is my whole name. Username. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to use this really. Password. Let's do that again. Email. 
put in your real email address. I'm going to put in a fake one. Let's see if it'll accept the mailinator email. Copy, paste, country US. I agree. Create my account. And I'll ask you to remember this. Remember it if you want. I'm not going to remember it. Hey, we have received your request to register, so you're going to have to go and confirm that email. I made a mailinator. I, I have a, or it was a fake mailinator email address. So I'm going to click mailinator, and I think it was. Yeah, that. Here we go. Obviously, someone else was using this too. So I'm going to click that, which is the registration link. Okay, successfully, or successful registered. I don't know. You can log in now. There we go. So then we're just going to click right up here, send this to the home page, where we'll be able to log in. Let me exit this and delete it because it's not really my email address. And exit the uh, stream thingy up here. So just this free shot cast. Okay, we're going to go up here. Top right it says login, click free account. That is old. Okay, and we're gonna use what was it? It was at mailinator.com. I think it was one. No, I have it. There we go. Password. Okay, login now. Not now. So this is what you're going to see. You need to install your radio. Press here to install. They don't mean download your radio. It's just like starting it up. So just click here. And broadcaster password. Let's make this one uh, password. Admin password. I like to make them the same. It really doesn't matter. That's just pretty much the broadcaster password. You're going to need this to stream to the server. I mean, listen to my radio hosts the server. So you're going to need this to stream to the server. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> if you access the server page, like the um, default like server page, because they host like a small page so you can see information like how many people are listening, etc. This is the password you're going to need to like admin. Admin be like an admin on that page. I like to make them the same, simple, but you can make them different if you want. Uh, especially if you're going to have multiple people broadcasting to the same server, then you might want to have this different because, or uh, that's assuming you want to be the only admin. Okay, uh, then you, you're going to have to add stuff to your page. So it automatically like hosts like a small web page for you to listen to your radio to. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to type in uh, Mr. X Kills Internet. And text one, I'm gonna say this is text one, and I'm gonna copy, paste that, because I've changed that to text two. You can put whatever you want, like um, do required 20 words. Let's copy and paste it. Oh, wait. Okay. That's enough. Okay. Well, anyway, so pretty much you can put descriptions and stuff. You'll see where this stuff pops up later. Uh, and radio URL. Here we go. So this is the URL that you're going to be able to listen to it to. So it's whatever dot listen to my radio dot com. Let's make it uh, Mr. X builds radio and click install. Oh wait, we put a the URL has a No apostrophe. Damn, we have to do everything again. Um, <clears throat> do this really quick. Um, let's just paste. This is text two. We wanted to say that. Sorry about this, guys. There we go. Install. In text one, we found zero words. What? Oh, man. I have to do everything over again. Okay, I'll be back uh, when I'm done installing everything.
Okay, hopefully uh, you were able to not put spam in all those boxes and follow their very specific rules and stuff for how to sign up and then you'll see this page so let's just press here and then we are in the US United States so I'll click here if you are uh, geographically closer to any of these other countries you're gonna wanna click the corresponding um, servers but I'm gonna click US and it's connecting is waiting down here um, there we go radio server has been changed please wait 60 seconds till your radio video server will get online okay let's uh, open up a new notepad uh, window and just yeah I guess I snapped it too big damn okay Let's just move it over here, copy the IP, this thing, hit control C, control V, and then on the thing under it, we're gonna copy the port. So we're gonna control C, control V. This is gonna tell us the exact server to broadcast to. And then we're gonna click radio details. And the stream is on. Now, how to turn the stream on and off. This is how you turn like the server on and off. And if you just leave the stream on all the time, the server will turn off by itself because it's a free account. But um, so you just click turn on off and then you click turn off. And it'll say stream is click here to refresh. It'll say stream is on, but it's really turning off. And if you notice, bam, stream is off. And then you're gonna click here, and then click turn on. And it'll do the same thing, but turn on the server. Hold on, let me refresh again. I refreshed too quick. There you go, stream is on. So as long as the stream is on, you can connect to the server, otherwise you cannot. Okay, so um, now let's open up Winamp. And Winamp was nice enough and nice enough to package us with a song to play on our radio station, it looks like. Very nice. So, pretty much, look at this null, null soft shoutcast source. This is your DSP source. We're going to click output, then an output one. In the address area, we're going to open up notepad where we have the IP address, which is right here. Copy it, control C, and then go here and control V. Paste it right in, maybe delete that space I have after it. I might mess it up. Go back, copy this port, and paste it right in the port area. Make sure there's no spaces around it either. Uh, stream ID, just let that be. Uh, user ID, username. Uh, well, first we're going to click Use Shoutcast V1 mode here, which, as you notice, blocks out this username. And it's because they do not have Shoutcast version 2 servers. They only have version 1. Um, so it'll work just as good. Just you don't get to send artwork with your broadcast pretty much. So in the password, I'm going to type in password because that was my secure password that I typed in. You can leave the rest of the stuff alone. Go to yellow pages. We're going to want to name our server here. So it's Mr. X Kills Internet Radio Server or Broadcast. Let's put that. This doesn't have any like uh, text limit, like character limit or anything. It just, yeah, you can type whatever you want there. URL, I uh, you notice it says shoutcast.com. Uh, you can put this to your YouTube URL, you can put it to anything, or you can just leave it blank. I'll put my website. There you go. And genre, we're gonna click this thing, and let's do, well, whatever you're going to play on there. I'll click talk, maybe, I don't know, technology. And uh, send track titles to the server. So here you go. You can send information to your server about what song is playing, like the title of the track. So when people are listening, they can go, oh, what song is this? And it'll tell them the name, uh, which is a neat feature, but you just have to set this up. So you can click use Winamp uh, here, and it'll send whatever Winamp says it's playing. Um, or you can uncheck this and type in uh, whatever you want it to say. So you can say live talk or tech, tech talk 24 
of seven. You can set that and then send the update. But yeah, you just click that and it'll update it to the server. Encoder, we're gonna go here and click MP3 encoder, or you can use the other one. I'm just more familiar with the MP3 one and I know it is compatible with Windows Media Player. So we're gonna click that. And pretty much what this is, is this is your quality of the broadcast. So like, think of it, this is the highest quality, but you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just broadcast in the highest quality? Well, it takes up this thing called bandwidth on your internet connection. And bandwidth, it's like how much, think of like, if you had a pipe you can only, that you can only jam, jam about like uh, three cubic inches of water into at a time. Bandwidth is that three cubic inches that you can jam in. So at 320 kilobytes per second, that's sucking up that much of your internet. Now, if you go down to 24, which is much, much less, you can still hear stuff and everything. It's a slightly smaller quality, but uh, it takes up much less if you're in much less bandwidth to broadcast. I suggest personally for music uh, to go with the around here these here uh, this is access this high stuff I don't, it, it sounds the same I mean most songs are recorded in about 96 kilobytes per second anyway like the actual song file so it'll play pretty natively in this but every once in a while you get a song that's up here but it sounds practically the same they just made the file ridiculously big for some reason so I suggest for music these three here and for talk I would suggest one of these three here um, because mono, you don't need stereo for talk and uh, very low quality and it doesn't take up a whole lot of bandwidth. And also feel free to choose anything else that you want to. Um, but it's just these here are decent quality without taking up a whole lot of bandwidth, you know. So uh, also, this is also one of the differences between part one and part two because part two is a little bit more difficult, but it also uses up more bandwidth now because this only uses up up to 96 kilobytes per second at one time um the or around there pretty much around 96 if you go up to 97 every once in a while blah 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 but pretty much then when we in part two we'll set up an icecast server where we host our own server and um pretty much that uh takes up 96 kilobytes per second per second per client that connects so uh yeah this is easier for the beginner to use that's why i suggested it anyway so click something i'm going to click the bottom one here easiest artwork nothing there logs just don't even mess with this you don't need to um so then we're just going to click connect you notice it's connected and it's sending bytes to the server that's just pretty much information um, but if you notice, we aren't playing anything in Winamp right now, so it's just sending dead space pretty much to the server. So let's start playing something. Uh, let me turn, or let me turn the Winamp. By the way, this volume doesn't control the actual stream volume, so let's just hit uh, repeat playlist here, this button, and click play. So then you can also add media to the library and stuff by clicking there and pointing it to a file. But uh, oh, I guess that isn't a sound file. Okay. Let's go and add in a file. I just dropped in the Beatles, Here Comes the Sun. Drop that in there. And it's playing Here Comes the Sun right now. I'll turn my speakers on so you guys can hear it when we go online. Um, so let's go to Firefox again. It's on Listen to My Radio. We can exit this for now. We don't have to keep it open all the time. And our, if you remember that URL you typed in earlier to your uh, radio page, which was Mr. X. <clears throat> it'll do this load for a second and then uh, it'll start playing the radio opening media connecting play oh well that one's not working right now this one's a flash one this one's windows media player so two different things one might work when the other one doesn't wow it like just froze or it's freaking out now. Firefox like I can't even click in here anymore. Let's see, does this get highlighted? Wow. Well, that sucks. Uh, I'll be back when I fix the small problem. Sorry about this. 
Oh, right, here we go. Reopen Firefox and everything. Oh, well, Windows Media Player decided to work. I have it on the lowest quality. So. Notice it is playing Here Comes the Sun. Uh, let's try out the other one. So I'll click Stop and click Play. So there you go. You've set up your own internet radio station. Um, very simple, very easy, and best of all, it works. Now, a lot of questions or people have is, can I broadcast from a microphone live? Well, you can. Um, so let's just move Win Winamp out of the picture. We'll go input, and then we change this to uh, <coughs> line in normally, not sound card input, which you can too. And then it pretty much it'll broadcast like whatever is getting played on the sound card. So like, um, if I pause this here, this one is doing sound card input sometimes. Or on my laptop, it has a line in thing that pops up here. So you're able to use that. Uh, you're also able to choose your capture device. You line in real tech high definition audio, which is my microphone right here. So yeah, you guys are, so pretty much on my radio station right now, it's broadcasting this little piece or this little thing I'm talking, you're able to set up push to talk if you want. Uh, very simple. There's like a mixer and stuff. But if you want to broadcast Winamp, just go back to Winamp. And there you go. It's broadcasting a Winamp. No longer me. wonder if we can hear me. Notice it is delayed. So, yeah, very basic. But anyway, thanks for watching. This has been part one of how to set up your own internet radio station. Uh, check out my website, www.mrxkill.tk. Uh, you can listen in. Also check out Adrenaline Game Reviews. I've been writing some reviews for that site under Jack, my real first name. Um, you can also <coughs> listen in to the Billy Hawthorne show. It's kind of, well, some people thought it was funny. I don't know. It, it's really mixed, but don't take any technical advice from that show that guy's crazy but anyway i mean we have to play like uh we have to play pretty much if you like submit something we pretty much will play it and the other people who want who run adrenaline game reviews wanted him to go on they thought he was funny so he gets to go on whatever you know and you know, I posted the little, like, trailer thing on my channel. But anyway, thanks for listening. Also, check out my channel. It helps a lot, um, you know, going and checking out my other videos, liking them, whatever <coughs> it is now. They changed it from giving five stars. I like the star idea, but liking, whatever, that works. doesn't show as bad how much you guys really hate my videos. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thanks for watching.